Hi everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at some new sensor areas, converting them to semi-hydro and then a one month update. So to start off with we're going to be doing the unboxing. This is from a website called Flora Store which is in the Netherlands. Um, they had a really great range of interesting sensor barrier hybrids. These aren't species um, that I hadn't seen in garden centers before. Usually you just see the like cylindrica ones and the like whale fin type ones. These will be my first sensor barriers, so I'm not an expert on them. If you're new to this channel, hello, uh, my name's Annabelle and I grow predominantly orchids. I have many different types of orchids that I keep in an orchid room. I don't like to count too much, but to give you a rough idea, as an estimate, I have over 400 different plants, mainly orchids, few little house plants that I'm dabbling in um, that I'm keeping in the same way as my orchids. So I grow exclusively in inorganic self-watering or semi-hydroponic setups and this is because it gives me sustainability. I can reuse and wash the media so although there's an initial cost associated with buying the materials you can then reuse them indefinitely pretty much because they're inorganic in the box now and lots of paper seems to be well packaged so initial impressions are good very huge box compared to the size of the plants that are in them you can see that they're all kind of taped really well at the bottom so even if the box tipped i think they would be pretty secure in place so i'm just going to grab them out of the box now very well taped in there so i will skip through this bit of me trying to get them out of the box because that's going to take me quite a long time i think they're really really well taped in there which is good for the plants but difficult to actually get them out of the box probably be easier to actually break the box up honestly at this point so we've got them out of the box and these are the sense of areas that i've ordered Aren't they cute? Super, super chubby and succulent, and I just love them. They remind me of Vanda orchids quite a lot, actually. And um, I'm going to be transferring these all to variations, modified semi-hydroponic setups. So I'm just going to cut into these and get them out. So this one here is a green jungle. These all have trade or commercial names. With sense barriers and with houseplants, it seems to be actually quite difficult to get the species parentage of a lot of these commercial hybrids. So they all have commercial names, it seems, but they don't seem to be registered in the same way that orchids are. So this is a sense barrier cylindrica green jungle. I don't know what species are involved in this. All of these are the cylindrica types. So I guess there's gonna be a few common species parents to these. From what I can tell, there are two main divisions of Sansevieria species, some that like more moisture and grow in more tropical conditions, and some that like less that grow in more desert conditions. Um, so again, I'm a beginner with Sansevierias. These are my first ones. Very, very wobbly in the pot, so I think we're probably a bit rootless here. And there's actually some damage to the crown, which um, I'm going to have to investigate later, but it seems to be a little bit damaged in there. Just going to get into the rest of these guys. So yeah, they're really well taped up. Took a week to arrive from the Netherlands to the UK. Shipped out quite quickly after my payment had processed and I got a confirmation email. So that's always nice. Sometimes um, you're kind of left hanging a bit. Again, these are really, really well um, packaged, but they are wrapped around many, many times with cling film and then taped around that as well. So it's actually very difficult to get into them. On the plus side, soil hasn't got anywhere, but they have actually taped this to the plant. So um, to me, I'm not a massive fan of that, but it obviously worked relatively well for shipping these. I just don't really like the idea of sellotape on a plant. Obviously you're blocking up the stomata on the plant if you're putting tape over it. So potentially the, also moisture could get trapped under there. These seem to be, have been shipped quite dry though. So that there doesn't seem to be any signs of rot at the base other than the crown of that other uh, green jungle, but uh, I think that happened before shipping. So I grow all of my plants in inorganic media, so I don't have any bark or soil or moss in my environment at all at this point. So um, I'm not a massive fan of soil, just from my perspective, sustainability, and also maximizing the efficiency of time with how I water. Inorganic media offers me a lot more aeration and a lot more flexibility with how I water. Um, so I prefer to grow in inorganic just for those reasons. Okay, so we're in, and this is the Sansevieria Cylindrica Almond Jade variety. Now, I really, really wanted this variety, but they only sold them in packs of three. I don't know if these guys are kind of more commercial nursery, um, but they wouldn't sell them individually. I had to buy three of them. 
but I wanted them enough that I bought three of them and I figured I either have lots of them or maybe I can do a giveaway at some point depending on how many people are actually interested in Sansevarius and houseplants that are watching this. Um, stay tuned and subscribe for future updates as to whether I give them away or what I do. Yeah, they look really healthy. They're a bit bruised. It looks almost as if they've kind of been a little bit battered. Um, and there's like some bruising to the leaf tissue. If you can see by the darker marks on the leaves there, it seems a little bit damaged, but nothing too bad. A little bit of browning at the leaf tips, but I suspect that that is just stress from transport. A little bit of damage to the leaves. And this is the almond jade. And again, I'm not sure of the um, species involved in this hybrid, but super cute damaged at the leaf tip there which is a little bit sad but otherwise seems very healthy and these almond jade ones seem to be more securely rooted in the pot from what i can tell they're not really wobbling around as much so they seem very healthy and they are packaged nicely super cute super chubby little bit of bruising on the leaves of this one so that is another almond jade and we do have three of these so the next thing we're going to be looking at is something else that I bought, which is the Pocon fertilizer that I've heard a lot about. Um, I thought I would buy this so that I could use a different separate fertilizer to um, the one I use for my orchids for the houseplant, just to save my good orchid fertilizer really, although the orchid fertilizer that I use is actually very good value for money because of the powder form and the concentrations of it, which is the Rain Mix by Akern Orchids. So this has all the essential nutrients. It's got in it nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus, as well as calcium and magnesium and micronutrients as well. So calcium and magnesium are super important and they often get missed out on um, normal NPKs. They're really important to have in for chlorophyll production, energy production by the plant, and the calcium helps with the structure of the plant and like cell wall integrity and forming nice strong leaf walls. This composition and the complete balance that this has is why I bought the Pocon fertilizer. The way that you fertilize is actually extremely important for inorganic media because your natural substrate doesn't have any intrinsic nutrients in like soil would. So this little cutie is the Sansevieria cylindrica inti variety. Again, I don't know the species composition of this, but it's just super cute. I find this kind of short, chubby structure much cuter than the longer Sansevieria cylindricas. So um, yeah, that's why I've gone for so many chubby little Sansevierias, but they're super cute, all of them. I love them all. What I'm going to do here is to repot them into their various inorganic, constantly moist setups, semi-hydroponics, using different medias, and then come back and show you the update all in one video so you can see the conversion process. So this is the Sansevieria Inti close-up. Super cute, and I love the variegation on it. Really, really adorable, and just love them. They're like little chubby mini vandas, and actually, Orchids and houseplants are kind of divided into separate groups, but really there are a lot of similarities that carry through for them. And if you can get the care of one down, then you really can get the care of the other sorted too. There's not this great divide and difficulty between the two. It just, it's about understanding their care requirements. And once you've kind of got that basic understanding down, you can grow anything pretty much. It's just trial and error and finding what matches their requirements in your environment and the way that you like to grow. So with these guys, they are succulents, um, but I'm still going to grow them in semi-hydro. I'm going to use a combination of different inorganic medias to try and match up their air to moisture requirements and also a thick pebble top layer to stop any chance of rot happening at the base. The Pokemon fertilizer, I've tried it out, and although initially my thoughts were it was quite a good composition, you can actually see a lot of the nitrogen in here is based on urea, and urea-based nitrogen is absolutely fine, it's very good, but it does require higher temperatures and um, breakdown before it can be used up by the plant, so it's kind of slightly more likely to contribute to root burn in lower temperatures. Something else I noticed was upon dilution at the recommended dosage, the PPM, which is the parts per million, which measures the salt content of a solution, was around a thousand and really what we want to be aiming for is about two to three hundred maximum before we're getting issues with potential root burn. Now the low concentration of nutrients meant that around a thousand ppm is actually probably ideal levels for the nutrients, the MPK plus calcium plus magnesium, but that high level of salts that you need to add in order to get that minimum MPK um, 
level up enough makes me uncomfortable. I wonder what else is in there that's contributing to that high PPM reading when the actual concentration of what we want in there is very low. I would rather use a high concentration, high purity of the essential nutrients that we want and just use that in a lower PPM rather than having to go really high to be able to get what we want in there. So I don't want to use it because of all the other stuff floating around in there and I don't want to contribute to root burn on any of my plants. So I'm actually going to stick to fertilizing with my regular orchid mix which is rain mix plus silicon plus seaweed for all of my house plants. So now if we take a closer look at the green jungle you can see that it's extremely wobbly in the pot and a little bit wrinkled and shriveled up. Um, it's also got crown damage on the largest growth and I suspect it's going to be pretty rootless. I'm going to be repotting these all off camera um, and then updating you in one month as to their progress in semi-hydro and this way we can see the transition and how well they adapted to semi-hydro. So one month later this is how they're all doing in the semi-hydroponic setups. I accidentally propagated the Sansevieria green jungle and this is because there was actually quite significant crown rot and damage inside the crown of the largest growth on that Sansevieria and what happened was when I went to repot I noticed that those leaves were super duper wobbly. So I'll update on that in a second. First of all we're going to take a look at the Sansevieria cylindrica almond jade and this is the one that I loved so much I just had to buy three of because I wasn't allowed to buy them individually. This is in a mix of Lekka, Lava Rock and a thick pebble top layer. I've also chucked some pebbles into the mix because I was running out of Lekka at the time. Lekka is lightweight expanded clay aggregate. It's a commonly used medium for hydroponic setups or semi-hydroponic setups which implies a reservoir of water at the bottom and then that wicks up throughout the mix to keep a constantly moist setup and you, all you have to do is then top up the reservoir to water and just never let it fully dry because the medium can then suck moisture from roots. You can see these are all adapting super well. I've had no rot issues at all. The growth on these has been actually super fast if you compare them to before. They've all grown pretty much another full leaf nearly. They've all got new roots going into the pot and branching old roots which means the old root system didn't die off following the transition. The new roots are really fuzzy and have a lot of root hairs compared to the old roots which implies to me that they're really trying to expand the surface area of the roots to suck up as much moisture as possible. If you look at them compared to the old roots they look so much nicer, fuzzier, thicker and just healthier in general. So I think that these guys actually do like a lot of moisture despite their kind of succulent appearance. On this one we do have a little bit of leaf tip browning and I think that is just the adaptation shipping, potentially there was some shipping damage or stress but no rot at all. As I said, they've all got a thick pebble layer at the base, which one, keeps the base of the plant nice and dry, but two, also prevents moisture loss because the pebbles themselves can't wick moisture from the porous medium in the pot. Look at those roots, they're super cool. I just think they look really nice and healthy and fuzzy. Um, and yeah, the top layer of pebbles actually stops the evaporation from the top, which can contribute to a dry, porous top layer. And with semi-hydroponics, what you can get is a dry top layer that desiccates roots. So adding in a non-porous top layer can actually stop that happening because that non-porous layer can't suck moisture from roots because those pebbles are just pretty much inert. They don't wick moisture up. Next, we're going to update on the Sansevieria Inti and the Green Jungle variety. Now I've spoken quite a lot about the crown damage for the green jungle but not shown you it up that up close so now we're going to take a really close look at the green jungle. It's really shriveled up as you can see, possibly slightly more than when I got it. When I got it I put some pictures up on screen, it was shriveled. What I did at the repot was I had to pull these three leaves out, they were super wobbly, you can kind of see the angle that they were at. So I pulled them out and popped them in a pot with lava rock as I'd run out of lecker and a thick pebble top layer to stop rot and we've actually already got a little baby plantlet forming on those so they've propagated really well in lava rock. Unfortunately the mother plant was pretty much rootless when I got it but the cuttings are doing very well. I personally found them very easy to root even though these were basically rotted leaf pullings. Um, the bottoms were a little bit rotted so I cut them up a little bit and they've rooted really well. I chose lava rock for these as I was nearly out of lecker but also lava rock retains more moisture than lecker. Inorganic material doesn't necessarily mean you're limited to just lecker. There are loads of different options and I've tried out several of these and kind of tried to measure the amount of moisture if you're interested in learning more about that. So even if the old plant fails, which I don't believe it will, I packed the crown with cinnamon to stop any rot 
progressing and it doesn't seem to have gone any further. We've actually got new plants with loads and loads of new roots starting here. So I might have more of the green jungle than I actually was bargaining on. If we take a closer look at the mother plant here, you can see that it is looking a little bit shriveled on the older leaves, but the leaf that it has grown a little bit since I put it into semi-hydro is looking much plumper. Um, it actually does also have new roots starting in the pot and the one of the new growths on it has grown significantly. So I really think that this one will be okay. I'm hoping that the older leaves will plump up eventually as it gets more and more roots down into the pot. It was very, very lacking in the root department upon repotting it. So um, I'm hopeful. This That's the worst case one and that's because it was in a bad state when I got it and it's recovering really well. So I am very hopeful that it'll do well. If we take a closer look at probably my favorite, the Inti variety, this is it at the unboxing. You can see that it's very well established and it had great roots. And this is it now. And if you actually look between the two, you can see that some of the leaves have grown quite a lot just in that short time of one month. Again, this is in a mixture of Lekka and Lava Rock. It also has some pumice in there, just because that's the mix I was using at the time. And really good roots. Two weeks after the transition, it was already putting new roots down into the pot. You can see them here, really fuzzy looking, really, really healthy looking. And this was the quickest one to adapt. It seems very vigorous. And this is it now, one month after the transition. Those new roots that it was showing at two weeks have elongated massively. This is the first one from that image. And they're just doing really well, branching loads. You can see algae in this pot. That's not an issue. I'm not bothered about algae. But if you are bothered, then what you can do is put the inner semi-hydroponic container into an outer mask. And when there's no light, there will be no algae. So this is doing really well. And you can see how moist it is in this. And this is, I think, due to the thick rock top layer. There's moisture going right the way to the top of the pot. And the roots are actually in the reservoir already. The reservoir goes up and down between waterings. So they're not fully submerged in water all the time. But those ones at the bottom will pretty much be always in water. And so far, so good. I should say I have been growing in semi-hydroponics for about three years, just over three years now. And initial success doesn't always mean that your plants will do well in the long run, but I have been growing in this way over a long period of time and what I would consider to be long-term. And I have had long-term success with this method and to the point that I'm now using it exclusively. So initial adaptation gives you an idea, but you may need to vary this care along with seasons. So for example, during winter, if you're getting cooler months, warm growers like Sansevieria's and like many orchids will need to be kept drier over winter. So if your temperatures do drop, you may need to keep them drier over winter. You'll just need to experiment with your environment and I'll need to experiment as I go along as well with houseplants to see how I can best keep them. I keep my environment heated and I try to keep that above 18 degrees Celsius to prevent any issues that you can get with cold, wet roots introducing rot. Just to introduce you to my environment, I'm growing most of my plants and orchids in a conservatory in the UK. In summers, we get very hot temperatures and I have had to put shade netting up recently to try and reduce that heat. In winter, I will keep it heated to above 18 degrees Celsius because of the constantly moist setups that I use. Most of these are kept under artificial lights. I do this with new orchids and new plants when I get them. Good light source when you first get an orchid or a plant can really help with that adaptation process. Light is the energy source for the plant and that will help the plant to adapt better. And as you can see, I'm keeping these guys on the warmer side. At the moment, it's around average 25 degrees Celsius. We're in UK summertime. It gets pretty hot in here during summer. And I think these guys really appreciate that heat and also the light. I have seen them reported as lower light level plants, but in my experience with orchids, low light seems to often mean that they can tolerate low light and may burn in high light. But if you can provide a nice, bright, indirect light source, they will appreciate higher light and grow better. While also adapt to repots and new setups better. So those are my new Sansevierias, the unboxing, the adaptation to modified semi-hydroponic setup using various inorganic media, my thoughts on Sansevieria care as an inorganic media grower and semi-hydroponic media grower. I'm not sure how useful this video will be, but I hope that you enjoyed it anyway, and thank you so much for joining me and watching it today. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid and potentially houseplant updates now that I have a few, as well as lots of thoughts on successful ways of growing in inorganic, constantly moist setups. And I'll see you guys all later.
Bye.